start with a uh, opening statement from Coach Houston. Sure. Um, so proud of this group. Uh, I can't express the words, uh, the, the progress that they've made throughout the course of this year and, and what they've dealt with over the last couple of years. Uh, the leadership of this team is as strong as any I've been around. And uh, again, I, I don't know if we're, we're the most talented uh, team in the country, but certainly uh, these guys work as hard as anybody. So so proud of the effort, the resiliency, their, their continuous uh, ability to manage situations. You know, today having a three hour rain delay in the middle of it uh, and coming back and, and fighting, picking up right where we left off. Uh, just, just such a uh, you know, vote to the leadership of this group and, and the ability of this group to manage adversity, to take it in stride, and, and just go get the next play. So, uh, really excited for the opportunity to to play on Monday, and know it's been a long time since this program's had one. Um, so, you know, we're excited to to be here. Great, thanks, Coach. We'll take questions now for student athletes. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Sophia and Joe have microphones, and uh, we'll start with Donald Moore from the Hartford Current here in the front row. Yeah, John Inches, how did you handle the three and a half hour delay? What, what did you do? How did you kind of approach it? How did you deal with it? Uh, I, I think the uh, coach had a good message for us. Um, basically, it was just we've, we've stopped and go throughout our careers. I mean, you know, two and a half years for me of flying and then getting stopped in 2020 and then not having a season in 2021 and then going again in 2022. Uh, so it's been a lot of stopping and going, so we're, we're used to it. And then you know, we had a little experience in Ohio State in the first round where we had a lightning delay as well. So we've dealt with it, and it's just, uh, you know, the ability to get on the field and play is always a blessing and a privilege. So when you get out there, you just got to get everything you got. So that was kind of the message is, yeah, we stop, but we're going to go again at some point. Uh, let's be ready to go when we do. Yeah, and much the same as what Johnny was saying, you know, a lot of the guys in the room have been waiting just to play for the last two years. And, and uh, you know, a few more hours wasn't, wasn't going to hurt at all. And, you know, having that first round experience with Ohio State and, and you know another similar type delay, I think it was just you know more of the same old and, and just enjoy the moment and um, you know a few hour, a few extra hours definitely uh, you know wasn't going to kill you. Questions for both. Uh, for, for both of you guys, it just seemed like you guys were sharper throughout that first half, second half too, for that matter, the first half in particular. Um, did you feel that way that you guys were pretty much on point from the start? And did you feel like there were some things to exploit on from, from, there, from them right from the start, whether it was a clearing game or whether it was on big plays and stuff like that? Uh, I mean, the whole mentality this year has just been game to one. Uh, you know, let's get that first goal. Uh, in this game, we didn't, but you just turn the page and get the next goal. So that was the, that was the message of the whole game that's been for most of the season is just one play at a time, make that play, and then make the next one. It wasn't. Really, you know, we got these guys after, you know, the first quarter, second quarter. It's just, let's make the next play. Let's keep going. Let's build on it. Um, but really, you gotta, you got to clean the slate uh, one play at a time, especially that lightning delay. You really we tried to just wipe the first half. It was a whole new game, basically playing like a second game. So it was really just clean the slate. Let's just get the next one. Yeah, I agree. It's a lot of complimentary lacrosse out there, you know. Offense get a goal, and then our defense will get a stop. And I think we just built off each other and, you know, built a good lead. And then, you know, like Johnny said again, just, Coming out of the, uh, the delay, more of the same, just game to one mentality, and, and that, that first GB was big, and just kind of built from there. Anybody else has questions for student athletes? Dom again in the front row. Yeah, I just want to ask you both because it's from Connecticut, but can you kind of speak to Harrison Bardwell's role on the team and, and what he's done to help you guys get here? Yeah. Yeah, Bard is awesome. Uh, one of my best friends since day one. He's a workhorse uh, stallion, uh, you know. He can go for days. He can run the field like uh, crazy for days, and uh, you know he's he's really one of the guys that's a heartbeat of the team. He's just always willing to get on the field and fight, um, and he's a great teammate. He makes a lot of plays out there, and sometimes it goes unnoticed because he doesn't want really to play play a glamorous uh, you know position where he's getting goals or assists or anything like that. But um, he's getting ground balls. He's playing a lot of shifts defensively, um, and you know he's a he's a great player, and he's a big reason why we're in the position we are. Yeah, he's just a, for me, being back there, he's just a common presence, really, just a, a veteran guy, a fifth-year senior, and, you know, he's one of the most athletic kids out there, and, and so it's just nice having him, you know, whether it's in the clearing game or, you know, man down or anything like that, he's just a good outlet for me personally, and I know for the other guys in the defense, just, you know, if we're struggling clearing, you know, he's a good guy to get the ball to and, and you know, get it up in the field, get it up the field, so. Yep. Terry points out across. Uh, just kind of two 
similar questions to address. The first being, um, can you speak to Gavin Adler's performance? And uh, the second being, can you speak to Michael Long's uh, riding duels and how they impacted the flow here? Yeah, I mean, I'll start first with, with Gavo and Mike. Um, you know, I guess first with Mike, he just, you know, we, you know, turn the ball over, go and make a save, anything like that. Um, you know, we really believe in the whole team playing defense. It starts with their attack, and you know, those are huge momentum goals that you know, ball doesn't even have to come down to our end to get a stop. Um, you know, Mikey had some good ones. CJ had a couple knockdown balls. Uh, Johnny's in there too, and, and I think that's awesome when when our attacker playing great defense for us up front. And uh, you know, and then for Gavin on the defense end, um, you know, one of my best friends and, and just a, a truly um, just warrior, really warrior teammate, and um, just obviously he's got all the talent in the world, but it's, it's more of helping coach and, and mentor some of the other guys out there because um, he, he really sees the game uh, like no other, and, and it's just awesome to have him out there, especially in my position. It's it's nice to have him in front of me. So uh, yeah, I think that answered well. Hi, Aaron Snyder from the Cornell Sun. Um, John, when you scored through your last of the day, do you realize that that tied the record, and how does it feel to be up there with the name of my French? No, I, I, I had no idea uh, that I tied it. I didn't really know I was close. Um, but I actually came off the sidelines, and one of my friends on the team mentioned that, and then, you know, smiled. And, you know, obviously, it's a, it's a cool thing, especially I didn't realize that, you know, tied my French has been. Uh, obviously, he's a Cornell great, and uh, he's been a big role model for me. He's, you know, reaches out all the time, and uh, he's an alum that you can go to for honestly anything, whether it be trying to get a job, uh, speaking across, uh, you know, whatever it may be. He's been a really good uh, influence on me and, and a role model, and uh, so it's, it's pretty cool time. But you know, it's not really about that. As as you know, it goes here at Cornell. It's about the team. It's just cool being uh, be able to play in the last game of the year. Yeah, oh, we have one more question. Yeah, for both of you, uh, congrats on graduating from Cornell today. Um, I spoke to Don yeah. about this earlier in the week, but you know, what does it mean after, especially after missing 2021, to be here this weekend and not be playing in a national championship game? Um, yeah, I mean, well, I still got hopefully a fifth year left, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. But uh, no, I mean, it's it's just uh, it's it's awesome feeling. This is what we dreamt about, you know, for the. You know, after 2020 was canceled and the year off of 2021, um, you know, you just you envision it, and um, that's that's what you work to. You come to Cornell to, to play in these type of games, and you know, just extremely grateful and, and proud of all the work that we did. Uh, you know, when no one was watching, we, we believed in ourselves, and um, you know, one more game left, and, and go out there and, and put a good game together. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, the only thing I would uh, emphasize is just we get two more days together. I think that was the message uh, for the whole playoffs was just uh, let's, let's fight to, to get spend more time together because it was taken from us in previous years. So we know how special it is to be together. So let's just keep fighting to stay together. So that was the message, and it's, it's awesome to get two more days. Anybody else for student athletes? Okay, Jason, John, thanks for joining us today. Have a good evening. Get some rest. Time to press first. Hi, coach. Congrats on the win. What does it mean to you to be the first Division One lacrosse coach to bring a team to a national championship as the youngest coach? Uh, I, I honestly, it's a it's a cool honor, but it, it's so far from me that that is making this thing go. There, there's 60 guys between the 50 on our roster, you know, five on our, our immediate staff, the five on our support staff that really make this place what it is. And, and Cornell is a special place. We're surrounded by special people, and, and so you know, a place that means so much to me. Uh, it's really cool to be on the stage to have the success that we have, and, and represent the university in the fashion that we have. Doc, so, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we get Doc. You and then Doc. Terry points out across. Connor, what do you attribute the? Uh, what was the most substantial factor in the outcome? And was there a moment, obviously, given the unique nature of the way the game unfolded, but was there a moment where it felt like the game turned in your favor permanently? And realistically, going in, we knew that they do a great job pushing transition intelligently. You know, I don't think that they they run and gun at, at the level that you would maybe assume with the NASCAR title. But uh, certainly, they, they take advantage of subbing mistakes, and, and they do a great job in the middle of the field, and they cause havoc. And they've got defensive personnel that handles the ball well. And so for us, it was stopping that transition. It was not giving them that life where you know when they get running, they get running, and then they did it to win in the quarterfinals, and they do a fantastic job of it. So that was kind of the first and foremost is we had to win tough ground balls in the middle of the field to, to earn possession and to stop that that run, uh, and we had to transition. 
transition back well and defensively, and, and I thought the guys did a fantastic job of that across the board. And really, I thought the turning point in the game, and again, all, there was multiple just feeling like it was two separate games, but in a lot of ways, it was you know Mike's ridebacks there, those, those rideback goals, and and kind of flipping the script and having some transition goals and some success there uh, felt like that gave us a lot of juice and, and that's who we are we want it doesn't have to be pretty it, it can be tough it can be gritty uh, ridebacks are, are, are you know they, those might as well be worth two uh, because I think the defense kind of slumps a little bit when they see it and they feel that and obviously you know it's a cheap one it's one that you steal and so uh, to get that done a couple times in that second quarter was was massive and it really gave us a boost and then uh, in that second or the second game, quote unquote, in the second half, uh, some of those transition goals, great defensive stops, tough ground balls, running the field, creating, and then you get John Piatelli with a couple there. And uh, again, the, those flipping the script on that felt like the difference maker and really what gave us uh, you know, some, some steam when we needed, especially coming out that second half and trying to manage all of the ups and downs of it. Uh, we go with Dom and a reminder to our folks on Zoom, if you have a question, you can raise your virtual hand. Dom. Yeah, the coach want to ask you to ask the players to describe Harrison's role in the team and what he's brought to it. Yeah, you know, they said it well. Harrison's a workhorse for us, a guy that's been on the field since the day he stepped foot on campus. Just an incredibly gifted athlete and a guy that just keeps getting better at his role and then what he brings to the table for us. Um, quite honestly, having Harrison back for this fifth year was uh, – such a relief when it first happened where we were anticipating that he was going to graduate last year and he got the allowance to come back as a grad student this year and uh, we were over the moon when he got accepted to that graduate program and so having a guy like that that we can lean on with that type of game experience that type of mentality that poise uh, on a relatively young team has been incredible for us and uh, most of that uh, short stick group right now is relatively inexperienced and so he brought a lot of experience a, a lot of uh, mentorship to that group and, and clearly you've seen the strides uh, from young guys like Davis and Smith and Bosley throughout the course of the season because of someone like Harrison. Are you here? Okay. Matt Hamilton, USA Lacrosse. We saw Hugh Keller have at least two bull dodges there. One of you broke a stick with. So for you, what does he bring to the table for this team? And do those goals kind of give the bench a little bit of a spark when he's going downhill like that? There's no doubt. He's, he's a beast athletically. He's such a matchup problem. And he runs so hard. And, and you've seen him grow up over the course of this year for a guy that with those physical attributes that he has, uh, you know, that, that maybe hasn't had the type of production that, that you know, would, you, would indicate that type of uh, athlete. He's just grown up and he continues to work at his craft and he continues to, to show up day in, day out and compete uh, like, like it's his last opportunity. And for us, um, seeing him seeing him pay off on this stage was, was gratifying. I, I know that's a guy that, that shoots a million lacrosse balls and you know last week, I, I don't know if he put one on cage, and this week, you know, he was shooting well. We were talking about it. I said, I think he's gonna have two goals this weekend. Sure enough, you know, by the second quarter, he had two and got another. So uh, just a, a fantastic competitor or a fantastic athlete, a guy that's just getting better at, at lacrosse, and uh, I think his ceiling's so incredibly high. And, and like you said, he, you know, because of the fashion in which he does it, which is just physically dominating, and gives everybody a little juice when he scores. Front corner over here. Kind of, what was the maintenance like there in that delay as a coach, trying to keep a level? Obviously, you basically did, but was there any concern as, you're, as you see a 15 and a half time turn into 45 into four? Sure. There, there's always a concern there, and, and again, you know, the guys mentioned it, but I think it was, uh, you know, nice to know that we had done it before. You know, two weeks ago, we had the same thing happen when we played Ohio State in the first round. We had to manage uh, two stoppages of play, and, um, you know, the key, and especially, you know, on the stage, there's just a lot of anxiety that kind of happens from just having to sit and wait and, and wait for that opportunity and not knowing when it's going to come as a challenge. And so, uh, again, kudos to the leadership for how they managed it. You know, our message to them was just physically relax, keep your mind focused in, but don't don't waste too much time uh, and energy just worrying about when it's going to happen. Just relax. We'll let you know when we can get back up. And again, the leadership of this group, it's, it's mentality to manage the ups and downs and, and the, the, the false starts and, and those little pieces. Uh, it, it's truly incredible. It, it's really, really exceptional for a group of guys, you know, 18 to 22, 23 years old. So, uh, you know, it, it falls on the leadership of this group. But the fact that they could manage it the way they did, come out the same way, and even again, give us the first goal in that second half and then fight back, uh, just just a lot of props to our, our seniors and, our, and the leadership of our team. Hi, Coach. Taylor Messier, doing the lacrosse trail. 
I'm just wondering how long will you give yourself and your guys to enjoy this feeling and this moment before you turn your focus to we have a game on Monday? Uh, great question. Uh, we, you know, we, we went in and, and kind of had a, um, you know, broke the team down in, in probably a, a more uh, unceremonious fashion than maybe we normally would. And, and the thought was that, you know, we've got guys kind of going to media, we've got guys who, who's got to go do some other obligations. And so, you know, let's enjoy it, you know, wear the smile, get in the shower, do your thing, go see your folks. And then as soon as we hop on that bus, you know, we got to turn the page because you don't want to waste minutes. And, and regardless of which team we're preparing for on Monday, uh, you know, we know that uh, there is a, an incredible opportunity on the table for us to turn around on Monday. And so we don't want to waste any more energy celebrating this one that we have to. A 48 hour window, you can, you can enjoy it. Uh, at some point, we'll look back and, and realize how special that win was. Uh, but for now, you got to kind of turn the page and just make sure that we're right back to work and, and taking care of ourselves tonight uh, and then getting ready for the game plan tomorrow and, and ready to, to come out flying on Monday. Obviously, you're familiar with Princeton. Is there, if you play Maryland, is there anything that you can take from this room in the ball? I don't think a whole lot. To be honest, at that point, we were taking, we were just trying to figure out who we were. It had been a long time since we got on the field. It had been a long time since we competed. And just knowing how good Maryland was, I think we were just hyper-focused on what we were doing and how we were going to get better throughout the course of that scrimmage. And so, uh, again, fall scrimmages with some guys in, some guys out, um, you know, makes things different and, and difficult to, to judge as a, as a real um, litmus test. But, uh, you know, I, I think watching them on tape this year, they're, they're uh, pretty incredible. So uh, we certainly have our work cut out for us if that's the matchup. Do you have any final questions for Coach? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was familiar about how playing a tough schedule made it hard for you guys to feel like you were playing your best in cross. Um, you know, after playing a new in Rutgers and you know, potentially a new one in Maryland or something we've already seen in Princeton, um, how does that you know change the mentality and how you go about your preparation? I think the mentality stays the same. As you and I have talked about, you know, playing that tough schedule, you know, never really let us come out of a game and feel like we did everything right, that, that we dominated from start to finish. We played incredible opponents week in and week out. And so, you know, even when the record would indicate we were having a fantastic year, uh, the, the guys in the locker room never lost sight of things we have to get better on, things we have to improve on. There, We never hit that contentment point where everything felt good. Um, week in and week out, you know, whether it was not starting or, or struggling in, in one area or another, even when we were winning, beating good teams, uh, there, there was that hunger, that desire to get better every week. And, and again, uh, as we watch the film today and figure out what we got to improve on for Monday and, and figure out who our opponent is, uh, I think the feeling is the same, but uh, certainly the schedule that we played, the gauntlet that it was, has battle tested our guys. And then you saw it in the last couple of weeks on the biggest stages, you know, high scoring game, low scoring game, everywhere in between. These guys have managed the ups and downs and, and uh, are prepared for, for everything.